shot fired. Don't nobody deserve what I'm going through. Don't nobody deserve that, man. Don't nobody... David Colley was gunned down by police in Fort Worth, Texas in July of 2016. He was approached by two officers who had been searching the area for two suspects, wanted for stealing a pair of tennis shoes. I've got a black male with no shirt and basketball shorts. Kali pulled his hand out of his pocket, and one of the officers fired. Robert 4156, had one black male hit to the back, shots fired. Five seconds elapsed from the cops first appearing to the shooting. Just try not to move, right? A bullet severed Kali's spine. Open your legs for me. Leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. Since then, he has lived in nursing homes, unable to work, with bed sores and bouts of depression. Wrapped up, caught up in a nightmare, man. Caught up in a nightmare. That's how I really feel, like, truly. To many Americans, the outlines of Kali's story have become terribly familiar, all the more since the death of George Floyd. Put your hand up there. But the fate of Kali's attempt at seeking justice has become familiar, too. He had committed no crime, but he didn't receive any compensation or his day in court because of something called qualified immunity. They covered up for you in the courtroom. They snuck in the qualified immunity, still covering for you. And then at the same time, we're going to give you a promotion. So it's a legal term. And for years, the words qualified immunity were rarely heard outside of legal circles. Mass protests against racism and aggressive police tactics, though, have shown a spotlight on the immunity defense. We need legislative change. We need policy change. We need to get some policies we need to take a look at, qualified immunity. So what exactly is it? Qualified immunity was created by the Supreme Court half a century ago to protect police from frivolous lawsuits. Supporters say the doctrine is essential to allow officers to make quick decisions in dangerous situations. Critics argue it allows cops to kill or injure others with impunity. The Democrat bill, um, they talked about needing to reduce immunity to go after bad cops, um, but that would result in police pulling back. So that is one thing that is a non-starter. So, so is that, it's called qualified immunity. Yes. Is that a red line for the president? Who That's a, a non-starter in the Democrat legislation. Yes. A Reuters analysis of hundreds of federal court cases about the use of excessive force reveals wide disparities in how qualified immunity plays out across the country. If Kali had lived in California instead of Texas, for example, things might have turned out differently. Take Benny Herrera. The father of four was killed in a suburb of Los Angeles in 2011. Like Kali, he had no gun on him when police approached him. Like Kali, he was ordered to take his hands out of his pockets. And like Kali, he was shot when he complied. Herrera died in the hospital. His family fared better than Kali in the excessive force lawsuit they filed. The courts denied the cops' request for qualified immunity. The case was allowed to proceed, and the family eventually secured a $1.4 million settlement. The regional disparities aren't confined to these two cases either. Reuters looked at how qualified immunity was granted in more than 500 cases among the various federal appeals courts. These circuits in yellow tend to favor plaintiffs, granting cops immunity less than 50% of the time. Those in blue tend to favor police, granting immunity more than 50% of the time. Reuters also analyzed over 400 cases at the district court level where lawsuits are actually filed and heard in Collies and Herrera's respective states. It found that officers in Texas are almost twice as likely to be granted immunity than in California. Experts say the disparities are due to differing, quote, judicial philosophies. Judges in some regions put more emphasis on police authority, others on individuals' civil rights. The Reuters findings add weight to the arguments for reform. It made no sense to me. It, don't, it made no sense to me. I feel betrayed. I feel abandoned, man. And it hurt. It hurt. It feel like I just feel abandoned. A broad coalition of politicians, lawyers, scholars, and civil rights groups are clamoring for the Supreme Court to end or rein in qualified immunity. As practiced, critics say, it too often denies justice to victims of police brutality.